I greet you all in the very blessed name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Before we go further, let us all bow our heads and seek God for His help. Let us all pray. Almighty, eternal God, we thank you for journey mercies through thy house. We thank you for seeing us through yet another day. We thank you for drawing us to the house of prayer tonight. And Lord, we do plead afresh for the cleansing and washing in the blood of our Saviour. O Lord, may this night of gathering be pleasing to you, that you will be in our midst, Lord, to speak to our hearts and to hear our prayers. And we ask now, O God, that you grant understanding that both from the youngest to the most elderly, Lord, may not just understand your word, but would embrace it, cherish it, truly have a hunger and thirst after righteousness. So speak, O God, we pray. We remove all the tiredness of the body, and Lord, help us to learn your word. We ask and pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, last week, we saw the case of how this rich young man, well, apparently having a great hunger and thirst after righteousness, he would run up to Christ, kneel before him. Now, even when Christ questioned him, he could honestly say that he followed and obeyed the commandment since he was young. Now, that is the kind of hunger and thirst, apparently, this young man had. Now, but there was one thing that kept him from going all the way to follow Christ, to truly follow after righteousness. And that, the Lord say, one thing thou lackest, and we know that was his riches. His possessions, the Bible tells us, this young man went away grieved, very sad in his heart, began with great excitement. I am going to find how to have righteousness, righteousness that will take me to heaven, how to live a life that, well, would be good before God. He even called Christ good master. He wanted to be like Christ, to please God. That is the definition of righteousness. But God says he went away grieved, starting so excited, thinking that he had found it, but went away grieved. And the reason the Bible tells us is because he had great possessions. He had great possessions. Now, the lesson we learned was there is a cost there is a cost to having true hunger and thirst after righteousness. There is a cost involved. And for this young man, this one thing prevented him from truly having that. Now, what is it for you and I? What is the Lord going to point out and say, one thing that thou lackest? Now, Christian, we can for a long time appear to have hunger and thirst after righteousness, do many things that seem to reflect that we have a hunger and thirst for righteousness. For example, you come for prayer meetings, right? You take FEBC courses, right? You do family worship, you serve, you want to please God. Now, this young man said, oh, I do many of these things from, from I observe your commandments closely from, from my youth. So many of us may have been like that for a long time. Well, but when the crunch comes, do we, did we truly have hunger and thirst after righteousness? Now, as long as we have something or some things alongside our, well, even relatively true hunger and thirst after righteousness, there is always this danger that there will come a day that you will choose that thing. So the lesson is, well, Christian, we truly have to ask ourselves, what is that one thing you will know in your heart? Is it family, loved ones, your job, your dreams, your ambitions? As long as you keep it alongside and not say, Lord, these things do not mean anything to me. I'm ready to give them up any time. Even things that seem innocuous, 
great possessions is not sinful. But you know that that will be the one thing that prevents you from going all the way. The hunger and thirst will be greater for this thing than for righteousness, pleasing God, living the way God wants you to live, the life that pleases Him. Now, I want you now then to turn, all right, to turn to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Now, let's read verses 23 to, 23 to 25. Luke 9, 23 to 25, reading. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Now here, the Lord said the very similar words to his disciples. Earlier on, when we read about this rich young man, all right? In Mark 10, 21, let me read to you. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Now the Lord saw this young man had a heart that desired, right, these things. He loved him. And said unto him, One thing that thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. The similar words, the same phrases. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. That is the thing that he wanted. You need to deny yourself. Come, take up the cross. And follow me. Now, look at Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10. Back to uh, Luke chapter 9, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 9. Now, what occasioned the Lord to say these similar words to the disciples? Well, you know this famous chapter. The Lord has just fed the 5,000. These people... Now, they seem to be hungering and thirsting after righteousness. They gathered in the first place. They followed Christ. They gathered and, well, they were wanting, apparently, right, to follow Christ. Listen to Him preach, sat before Him, gathered around Him. And when Christ saw that they were hungry, He fed them with a miracle, right, a miraculous feeding. Now, it is at this point that... Then the Lord said these words to the disciples. Now, if you look at Luke chapter 9, right? Luke chapter 9, in verse, verse 18. And it came to pass as he was alone praying. His disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Now, the Lord went away to pray. I mean, on a side, like we learn in our family camp. Now, when you see the Lord's life, even when the disciples were around him, the disciples were with him, he would just pray. Is that our life? Well, if our family, our friends, um, our um, people that we like are around, well, we're always occupied with them. Here the Lord just went away to pray, right? Not embarrassed to pray. Now, here then the Lord would say to them in verse 23, he told them the cost, the cost of discipleship. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, this is what we read earlier on. So, similarly, while the people seemed to have a hunger and thirst, they thronged after Christ, followed him, sat at his feet. Wherever he went, they, were, they would chase after him. But when they chased after him across the water, he simply told them very honestly, you are not desiring my teachings. You are not desiring truth. You follow me because you desire the food. Your hunger and thirst was after the free food, the 
limitless, seemingly limitless supply of food in their minds. That is why you're following me. Now, the point is this, Christian, we can seem to have a hunger and thirst. They followed Christ like we are following Christ. The rich man ran after Christ like we seem to be running after Christ. But even for the believers, the disciples of Christ, Christ warned them. Yes, the rich young man was not a believer, but here these words were in private to his believing disciples. And he said the cost, now the cost of following me. What is hungering and thirsting after righteousness? To follow hard after Christ, to be like him, to please him, to follow him closely, hungering and thirsting for that. Now, if you look at Luke chapter 9, verse 23, tonight we want to consider this cost. The first thing he said, let him deny himself. You want to come after me? You want to follow after, well, what is pure, the purest example of righteousness? You want to come after me? Well, anyone who says that, let him deny himself. That's the first thing. The cost of hungering and thirsting, following after Christ, is denying self. Now, what is denying self? What is deny? Now, deny is to abstain from. All right? The definition literally means, deny means abstain from. This is completely the opposite of hungering and thirsting after. This is deny. Don't have a hunger and thirst after this. In fact, abstain from it. Keep away from it. Abstain is the opposite of hunger and thirst. Now, it means to affirm. This, to, uh, to deny self means to affirm one has no acquaintance or connection. No acquaintance or connection with someone. To deny self means I no longer recognize, nor associate not follow after self. Deny any connection with what self desires, what self wants. Now, it's to forget oneself. To forget oneself. To deny, deny self means self no longer um, is on your mind. To deny one's, to forget oneself and lose sight of one's interest, one's own interest, to lose sight of your own interest. Now, this is the definition of denying self. My interests are no longer in my sights. They are out of my sight. Lose sight of it. These young men would not lose sight of it. These people that are coming after Christ, they will not lose sight of, well, all the all the physical benefits that they can have in so-called following Christ. Lose sight of one's interests. Last week, we saw some of them. Well, your interests in your ambitions, your interests, even your hobbies. If you know that that is the thing, if you know that that is the very thing that is preventing you from Having that picture that we learned about what is a man that is hungering and thirsting after a righteousness like? Oh, he is ravenous, right? He'd rather have the word, he'd rather have prayer, he'd rather have fellowship with God, he'd rather obey God than anything else. He's so excited at the end of the day. Just like when it's time for, for meal and you're hungry, you are excited to eat. Are we like that when it comes to spiritual things? What is preventing us from being that? Well, the Lord says, the one thing, if you want to follow me, then deny yourself. Deny yourself. Now, dear hearers, self, self is the biggest barrier to us following after righteousness. That is the greatest barrier. That is the greater co greatest cost to us, self. The rich young men, may have great possessions, but the bottom line was not the possessions. The bottom line was he went away grieved because he do, his, the self, the self wants those things. The self wants to keep those things. That is the bottom line problem. So when Christ asked him to sell away everything, 
He was merely pointing out, you will not deny what yourself wants. That is the problem. Now, ultimately, being unwilling to give up anything is, it comes down to this. The flesh, the self, wants that thing. And it could be pride. Pride that makes you not want to give up something. This rich man, he had great possessions. Why did the Lord say now, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor? Then he becomes nobody. You sell away everything, you still can have money to buy things, you still have money to show off. But say, give it all away, you become a nobody, nothing. They will be richer than you. See, ultimately, the self is the problem. Now, in fact, the Lord in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 25 says now, for whosoever will save his life. You see, it is about your life, yourself, that life of yours, that life in you. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, shall save it. Lose his life for, for what? For my sake. That is righteousness. In order for, to be what Christ wants us to be, preceptive will as well as personal will, for his sake. Now, that is seeking after righteousness. Righteousness is what pleases God, right? We, we kept reminding ourselves, what is righteousness? Whatever pleases God, whatever is acceptable to God, now, for his sake, the problem is the self. Is for my sake. That is the barrier. My sake. Christ, not your sake. Now, at this point, I want to just to bring us back to this key point that I'm trying to help us understand from the Word of God. We can have all this outward form and even in our heart to some degree and may even be a great degree of hungering and thirsting after pleasing God. That can be there. It can be there. But here Christ warned the disciples, you look at these people, they followed me, but it was because of the self. They would, because of what their flesh, what they want, the, what they wanted. It's not what I have to offer in terms of righteousness. It's not that. And you, disciples, you have to be very careful of that. And if any man, they or you, if any man, doesn't matter, whether it's them or you who are very close to me. Well, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Now, when I think of this, how we can have this, now it's very fearful, very fearful thought. Will you, will I, continue to be doing what we are doing, pursuing Christ, like how we are pursuing, and keep growing? Or will we leave? Will we leave the sight of Christ? Well, you may leave because you're not safe, or you may just decide to, well, I'll live an easier life, a, a life that I do not have to deny self. I will have Christ and also self. Will we become someone like that? Now, we studied how dangerous it is. One of, the top, one of the sessions we learned, the dangers, the dangers of not having a hunger and thirst after righteousness. I hope you remembered the lesson. It's a very dangerous thing. You will slowly but surely um, backslide. You cannot have both in your life. Christ made it very clear. You can't serve two masters. It's impossible. You will eventually Embrace one and deny the other. It will happen. Why are many Christians so nominal, so um, worldly? Yes, when you look at their life, you're quite sure that they're saved. But there is no hunger and thirst in their life after righteousness. Why? And they're happy enough. Now, I want to just cite a few examples. Even as I read this, Many of these situations come to my mind. Now, I remember many people who have come into this church 
and are no longer here today, either attending, well, um, compromising churches that will not deal with sin, an easy life, or have, well, just simply stop attending church. Or maybe at, at best, maybe once in a while, live stream, listen to messages, that's all. I remember a couple, they came, and um, I've, it was at that point very refreshing to see a uh, uh, middle-aged or almost elderly couple hungering and thirsting after righteousness like them. It was, it's always very wonderful to see um, people in their 50s, 60s, 70s even, so hungry for the Word of God. They invited me to their house. Well, they come for Bible studies after Bible studies. They can't stop talking about um, what they learn. Then they invited me to the house. I went to their house. It was really so amazing. The, their house is set up for just one thing, right? Their furniture, any things and all that were all just tables and facing the television, right? And on the table was just Bible, notes, notes, pen, you can tell that, that they organized their life around studying the Word of God. They watch sermons, right? They follow Bible studies very seriously. They say, what's your routine like? They get up, right? They have breakfast, and then after that, they'll sit there. And pretty much the whole day, they, they do that. They are day in and day out. Now, I was thinking, wow, this, this is truly a classic um, example of hungering and thirsting after righteousness. They have very little in interest in anything else. At the most, walking to exercise to keep themselves healthy. All right? It was that kind of hunger and thirst. Now, but when something came up, we implemented the prayer booklet right? at some point. We said, well, we will have a booklet that have all the things that the church needs people to pray for. Right? And we have a booklet. And they got very, very angry. Right? Very angry. Um, they say, we don't like to pray from booklets. Then other things. Begin to have arguments with another Christian in the prayer group over nationalistic ideas, nationalistic loyalties. People can have great hunger and thirst. But when it came, came to things that would affect self, we don't like this. Because before they when they left, I did, I did speak with them and say, our main problem is the prayer booklet. We never had that. You know? And what I heard from the prayer group as well, always arguing about ideas, about nationalism and all that. Self. What has it to do, at least as what they say, little to do with righteousness, little to do with truth. It's just self. Self, that's all. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. When it comes to a point of something that we are used to, we grew up with, it means a lot to us. It, it means... Um, 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 we're not. We are so used to something, and it's just self. And when it is, when those things change, was the truth was the truth really a hungering and thirsting after righteousness at the end of the day? When the cost comes, are you willing to put aside this? Now then, there the, there was another couple, right? I remember this couple came and they heard the word of God. They were looking for a church. They said, we are hungering and thirsting for a place where the Word of God is taught, where we get to study, where the truth is preached without apology. Right? And the person, literally, the first few services was crying and crying, crying in tears, sitting in the congregation in tears. And after that, the person said, you know, I thought there was no such teaching. No one would teach the Word. No church would, would be faithful to the Word anymore. We gave up. We are so thankful. And even when the person was sharing to me about how, how you know, finally they found a place where they can be fed with, with, with truth. The person was sharing with tears. The same, very hungry to study the Word. Every Bible study, asking 
very sincere questions, always learning, always wanting to understand the truth, the Word of God, rather. Well, the same thing happened. When we moved to English and Chinese service, we don't like that. We don't agree with that. You know, we, the first time we came was English and Chinese. We want it to remain that way, right? We don't like this change. No matter how you explain the reasons, I don't like the change, right? And even went round trying to convince others to go against it. Has it anything to do with truth? Nothing. It was just self, that's all. Would not deny self. When they left, they wrote. You know, I tried to persuade them, speak with them. And they, find, they say, well, we will never find, as far as we can see, we've never heard um, the word of God taught like that, and I doubt we will ever um, um, find such things. But we, but, we, but, we, but we have to leave. We have to leave. That's it. Now, so what I'm trying to say is this. We can have all this. And over time, you see and you hear with your own eyes and your own ear, ears that people can have that. Maybe it's us. What is that thing that is so crucial to yourself that you would well, say, well, then I won't follow this truth. Even where the truth is taught, I won't follow it anymore. Then the last example that I can remember, again, great hunger and thirst came, well, struggled with certain teachings, then after that, began to understand it, made significant changes in the person's life, in the family. The way the children are brought up changed, huge changes. And you think, wow, this is really a hunger and thirst after righteousness, right? But there was one doctrine that this person could not accept. One doctrine they could not accept. Why? Because this person wants to give a certain lifestyle to the children. Once this person even say, you know how embarrassing it is when I ask, you know, what is the problem? I say, you, can you just don't teach this doctrine? I say, I cannot. It's in the Word of God. But you know, when you teach this doctrine, then, then people will see my life. Then I say, well, then you cannot expect a pastor to change a doctrine so that people don't see your sin. They say, one of the reasons is, you know how embarrassing it is for me to go to um, wake up early and go to a market on weekend because the, the, the things are cheaper there? You know how embarrassing? I want to go to Coles. I want to dress a certain way and go to these places to buy food. Not in these market places. It's very embarrassing for me. You see, at the end of the day, it's self. Self that will eventually make you struggle against even doctrines. You eventually not want to follow the truth. Now, we have this that go through our church. And I'm sure other churches have experienced that as well. Hungering and thirsting after righteousness seemingly for years, for years. But always somewhere in us, there is one thing or something that we will not deny self of. Now, when we say we hunger and thirst after righteousness, always remember one thing. And even when the Lord looked at this young man, the Bible tells us the Lord's heart was filled with love for him. This young man was really wanting those things, right? If only this young man would be truly saved and channel this desire of his to a true desire, how wonderful it would be. This young man probably had, well, other reasons, but it was there, that pursuit after Christ. And here the disciples are warned, well, you know, you're following me, but you better realize this. Unless you deny yourself, you are in danger. You are in danger. And when we hunger and thirst, hunger and thirst after righteousness is not a stagnant thing, all right? Please know that. You hunger and thirst after something, God will feed you. You study later, he says, um, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, righteousness for they shall be filled. God will feed you. So those of you who are, well, I really want to obey God. I want to follow Him. I want to learn. I want, I, want to, I want to change. God will feed you. He promised that. But as God feeds you, feeding like feeding a child, right? And God uses His Word the same way. 
A child begins with milk. The child is hungry for milk. It will take milk, it will take milk. But every parent knows that milk is not enough for it for the rest of its life. As it grows from the milk, then it will proceed to meat. So God uses his word and say, well, you know, you Corinthians, it's time for me to feed you with milk, uh, with meat, but you are still at the milk stage. You, you're not growing. You're still like childish, immature. So God uses his word to explain the, the concept. God will then begin to feed you with meat. And some of these people, when, if it's doctrinal, yes, certain meat is something that I do not like the taste of. I, fi- I don't want to digest this. I don't want this. So as you follow after, or hunger and thirst after righteousness, you must know that the meat will come. The meat will come. The meat part will come. You can't only like steak, like me, and not like fish, right? It will come. It is needed. All kinds of nutrition through different kinds of meat, different kinds of vegetable. So God uses even his word to, uh, uh, and as an analogy to, to all these things to help us realize. And when it reaches that stage, the one thing that will be between you and growing to the next level of hunger and thirst is self. Self. What is that thing? What is that thing in you that you're so used to that you cannot give up? What is that? It can be cultural, it can be ideas that you just won't submit, just won't submit to God. Now then the Lord says, take up your cross, take up your cross. Now when that kind of meat comes, just like Christ, well, he fed them, he taught them the word of God, he even literally fed them physically. But then that feeding of you must follow me because purely because of the truth. You cannot want a health and wealth gospel. You follow me only for the truth. And for the truth, you're willing to give up anything to follow me. They could not swallow that. Right? Pun intended. They could not swallow that. They left. They just get it from him. Right? So Christian... When that meat comes, you have to take up the cross. Denying self is to crucify the self. Take up the cross is literally means this is the cross that must, that like I will be crucified on the cross. You have to crucify yourself. Deny yourself is painful. Yes, will you take up the cross? Now the cross, as many well point out, once you're on the cross, you cannot look back, right? You can't turn back when you're hanging on the cross. Well, there's no more the self anymore. You can't turn back to your old ways, look at the world, look at your past, and the things that you want and want to continue in them and go back to them. So Christ say, you want that, then you have to take up your cross. Now, taking up the cross must remind us this is a fight, right? You must fight against your sin, it will be painful. It will be, it will be something that you want to avoid doing. You want to keep growing in your following after me, which is hunger and thirst after me. You want that? Now, are you willing to fight? The Apostle Paul often writes about fighting, right? Whether it's about the soldier, whether it's about the boxer. Now, we are constantly needing to fight against sin. If you want to hung, if the, put it this way. Now, you know that the barrier to hunger and thirsting after righteousness with the bottom line is self, right? Then now you've got to begin to fight against self. Fight against sin that, is, that the self wants. You are not to love self. You are to fight against self. You are to hate the flesh. Are you fighting against sin? Your hunger and thirst after righteousness over time will begin to dwindle. 
You would reach a stage where if you don't keep fighting against sin, fighting against self, very soon you say, you may even come, but you sit there, you're just switched off. Haven't you met many Christians like that? Initially very hungry, very hunger, very hungry, all right? Love to talk about spiritual things. Then after some time it's, ah, you know, I'm tired of this. Well, because something about self has taken over. Then you just come because your parents want you to come because you have to come because of whatever reason. That's it. You need to keep fighting against self all the time, the Lord says. Take up your cross. Keep bearing the, the cross. Keep killing, crucifying self. Fight against yourself. Crucify it. Then he says this. If you notice, take up his cross daily, daily, daily. Your quiet time that you don't feel like doing at times, fight against self. Your study of the word. Maybe next year, I, next semester, I won't take FEBC course. Fight, deny self, fight against the self. Why does the self want to drop it? Be honest about it. Your time of personal prayer that you set aside. The self said, you know, it's a long day. Uh, today, maybe I'll give myself a break. I'll just, well, just lie in bed and watch some videos or whatever it is. Serve the internet. Deny self. Hunger and thirst has a cost. When you begin to say, well, just give me, give self, give in to self once in a while, that once in a while we will come more often and more often. We got to fight. And it's a daily thing. Daily. Daily. Daily repentance. Not maybe I'll repent next week. Daily repentance. You know you have sinned. You know holding on to, you're holding on to something. You know you, not have dealt, you have not dealt with it. Deal with it today. There are things that I need to do about my family. I have not done it. It's daily. Do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Every day. And if you fail one day, repent the ne and resolve, I will not do it tomorrow. I will not fall into this again tomorrow. If you fall, seek forgiveness. Genuinely, turn to God. Keep fighting. That is what the Lord is saying. Deny Himself, take up the cross daily. Daily. What is your life daily, dear friends? Now, over dinner on Sunday, I close with this illustration. On Sunday night, when we're having dinner, I was with some parents, and yeah, they thought, you know, children, uh, we're talking about what they eat. Oh, you really have to avoid certain things with them, sweet things or certain diet. You have to really be very, very disciplined with them daily. <laughs> All you need to do is let them taste one of these and let them have it one a day, two a day. So every day is a fight with them. They want this, they want that. They know that the moment they let them have that because that is their weakness. What is our own weakness? We know that is this child's weakness. If I let it into this child's life, it will, get, it will affect its appetite for the proper food. Daily, daily, daily. Don't say, uh, maybe when, when I start to work, then I'll be like that. When I'm working, when I've solved these things in my life, when I've solved my loans for my house, got what I want for, for my life, then I do this. No, the Lord says, start now and do it daily. The denying of self. Hunger and thirst is affected when we begin to say that, well, I don't need to live my life daily like that. Right? These are the costs, dear friends. Maybe it's not new to you, but... Let's ask ourselves honestly. Since we started learning about this, even about how to develop hunger and thirst, to have a disciplined life, to put these things in until they're so grooved in, it becomes part of you that when you don't do it, when you don't have it, you're so uncomfortable. This is how you develop it. Have we done it? It's nothing new to us. Well, then we have to say, Lord, I do not have that hunger and thirst after righteousness to the point that I will bear the cross. I will deny self. Lord, I don't have that. I, knew, I know all this, but I'm not doing anything about it. And I just keep wondering, why is my life, why is my family life not what it should be? Why is my children, why are my children growing less and less interested in spiritual things? Why? What happened? What have I done? 
Is it me? Their children will have struggles in the world, but parents, that is where you are put in their life. But if your own life is not one that is hungering and thirsting after righteousness, you will fail your children. Singles, don't think that not having a hunger and thirst after righteousness, no one knows. I go home, I do whatever I want, I come to church, I pretend, all right? I may even um, kind of deceive myself that I do have it, that's why I'm here. No one knows, no one sees, singles. But what is your life daily? What is your life daily? Well, that is the question that only you can answer for yourself. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. God willing, when we return, we study what does it mean to be filled. Let us turn to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we close this part about what is hungering and thirsting after righteousness, what it looks like, how to develop it, what are the barriers, what are the costs. Oh Lord, we pray that before we move on, you will deal with our heart tonight. Lord, if we have not known of what many of the disciples have known of, that closeness to you, of the hungry and thirsting like the Apostle Paul after you, oh Lord, may you work in our lives. We want to respond. We will want to discipline ourselves. Lord, we want to do our part to deny ourselves, to take up the cross. Lord, then we can follow you as we ought to. Oh Lord, be merciful, even as we resolve in our hearts. And Lord, we pray now that you meet with us in the place of prayer. The church is powerless, has no wisdom, is unable to do anything without you. So Lord, be merciful to hear our cries for thy church. Lord, thy people need the strengthening, the working in our hearts to obey you, to love you more. Lord, hear our cries for each other. Lord, be with us now, we pray, as we enter into the place of prayer before your throne of grace. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.